A 16-year-old climate activist has sparked outrage and controversy surrounding the already controversial issue of climate change. Greta Thunberg, a Swedish child of a well-known opera singer and actor, gave a pretty alarming speech to the UN recently. But where did she come from, and why are people freaking out about her? Tonight at 11. Just kidding, it's a podcast. We're going to cover it, like, right now. Right? But, but before we get into that, let's point out where I stand, stand in the climate change debate. Because based on that intro, this could go either way, right? Like, I could be a climate believer preaching the gospel of 2 degrees Celsius, or a climate denier that thinks that Obama invented the global warmings with a socialist Muslim agenda of prostitutional virginity. Now, I do believe that climate change is happening as a result of human industrial expansion and can be heavily curta curtailed and possibly reversed if we can reduce our carbon emissions, change our antiquated grid, and prop up the use of solar energy and batteries. Over the last few years, we've seen a lot of scientists come out and say that we have roughly 11 years before things become irreversible. And there was an article that went viral about the Earth becoming a ball of fire where 2050, where the only creatures walking the planet are Searcher from Thor Ragnarok, the Eye of Sauron, and a few Floridians. Now, that apocalyptic prediction can cause a lot of distress in young minds, especially ones facing mental health issues such as Greta. Greta Thunberg has OCD, selective mutism, which is an anxiety disorder that causes people to go silent in certain situations or around certain people. This pretty much happens to me whenever people start talking about investing or buying stocks. I selectively mute myself because all I want to do is yell about how stocks are meaningless and just a popularity contest for rich people's money, but then people stop inviting me to parties. Her biggest diagnosis is... Asperger's, which is a type of autism. Greta calls that a superpower because it allows her to see the world differently than most people, and that's probably true. Now, I've had a theory that people on the autism spectrum might be showing us an intermediate step to human evolution. Usually people on the spectrum have a higher capacity of information gathering and pattern recognition. They hone in on something uh, and put everything they have into figuring what that something is. I see this as a cognitive boost, but with the trade-off of less control over their emotions. If we can get human humanity to a point where we have a cognitive boost and control over our emotion, we'd probably be golden. Now, in her UN speech, Greta is very emotional when she asks, how dare you, to the room of adults. She accuses them of robbing her dreams and her childhood with their fairy tales of eternal economic growth. Now, this is interesting because Greta herself might be a product of a way to get eternal economic growth for the corporate green sector. Back in August 2018, Greta began protesting outside the Swedish parliament. Now, it is reported that her opera singer mom did tell some folks at Parliament she'd be doing this, but Greta was also propped up by Ingmar Renshog, who worked very closely with Al Gore and is a owner of a Swedish startup called We Don't Have Time. Uh, newsflash, Ingmar, um, we have like 11 years, dog. Like, that's what this scientist said, okay? He recruited Greta to increase youth activism towards climate change and through emails and social media made her a viral sensation. Now, in early 2019, Renshog became, became the chairman of a green think tank called Global Change. Greta was able to recruit youngsters into the climate movement, and th through that, Renshog was able to gather more young people for this think tank. Now, this think tank was also funded by Swedish billionaires and former prime ministers. Now, the argument over whether Greta's parents did or didn't know about their daughter's face and story being used for Renshog in his promotional material is eh, contentious, but they did cut their ties with him back in January because of this debacle. 
But Greta does seem to be the bell of the ball when it comes to green corporations, and it does seem like she's being used by the left as well as the privatized, sec privatized sector of green corporatism. The push for environmental reforms, especially in her home country of Sweden, means more government contracts for green energy corporations, and that would skyrocket their profits. Now, I'm not particularly against the idea of green companies making money, right? We currently reside in a capitalist society where money dictates the effectiveness of things. And right now, money is being controlled by the fossil fuel industry, working in tandem with the world governments. If there was more opportunities for the green sector to push forward with their ideas of solar energy and carbon reduction and put in, put in put that in direct competition with the fossil fuel industry and how they're used, you'd probably find that most regular people want to go with green energy. It turns out most people don't want to live in a hot, sticky condition where it's harder and harder for them to breathe and then immediately switch over to an immensely cold condition where it's still harder and harder for them to breathe. The issue right now is that these companies are not doing are, are these companies are doing that by using the face of a child. That's what the green corporations are doing. But this is the model that most of the world is living on, right? Work, earn, spend, repeat. Because of this call to consume, America actually has six times the ecological footprint of India. The American and even the Swedish lifestyle encourage the need for more consumption of products and single-use items. Even with its, with its large population, the ecologic footprint of the average Indian is far less than that of a Westerner. The ideals of capitalism and the single-use culture will result in a planet that is being a single-use. But Greta isn't the only child fighting in the name of the climate crisis. She is one of 16. There are 15 other kids, some younger than Greta, whose names, stories, and faces have barely been used by any media, independent or mainstream. And all 16 of these kids have filed a lawsuit against a variety of countries that have been contributors to the growing climate crisis under the notion that it's against children's rights. And before we talk about this lawsuit, let's talk about why the rest of the 15 kids haven't received as much media attention as Greta Thunberg, as a well-off Swedish girl with a few mental health issues. The answer lies in that description. I think Greta became the poster child of this movement because she has Asperger's, OCD, anxiety, and selective mutism. This makes Greta a sacred cow in that she can't be criticized because of her mental health issues. Michael Knoll, a man that is being called Ben Shapiro Light, probably because he actually takes breaths when he speaks, unlike Ben Shapiro, said that she had mental illnesses on Fox News, and the left freaked out. Now, the empirical fact is that she does have a few mental illnesses, but let's be honest, we all do. Noel clearly has Shapiro dystopia and has and it's gone pretty much undiagnosed. But Noel was bringing it up to discount what Greta is saying, which is what makes his statements a problem. Now, the interview also had a climate believer that did not particularly handle the situation well, probably because he's got some mental illnesses as well, right? I mean, the interviewer pretty much went off the rails, and Noel was called, quote-unquote, skinny boy, and a few other insults proving that Fox News is really a televised schoolyard fight. See you by camera two at 3 p.m. You know, the left insults Noel, the right defends him, and we're not really talking about how Greta's mental health concerns can be exasperated by the overwhelming amount of public support and becoming the face of the entire climate change movement. And that's basically what's happened to her. Greta Thunberg has become the mascot and face of the climate change movement. And this is part of the reason why a lot of these movements fizzle out or fail. We can't put the whole thing on the backs of one person. Now, I do understand that a majority of the climate activists are still doing a lot of work to change legislation and get countries to divest from fossil fuels and take action in propping up alternative energy sources. 
And this is part of the critique of the hyper support of Greta Thunberg, propping up this child versus all of the on the ground activist work from climate activists of all differing identities. I mean, we didn't have a frenzy like this over the human rights violations against the DAPL protesters in North Dakota. Instead, all we saw was Star Wars weapons being used against water protectors. We didn't have this much coverage about Flint's water crisis and the pitfalls of privatizing a natural resource. Instead, we had Nestle remind everyone that water is a monetizable foodstuff. Oh, and there's a new candy on the shelves. We weren't freaking out like this when Extinction Rebellion superglued themselves to the doors of Congress to legislate the further use of fossil fuels. And we really should have. It would have gotten more people to ask the question, why aren't our leaders doing something to prevent the degradation of our climate? While Swedish Greta took a boat and refers to herself as one of the lucky ones because of her wealthy background, we still don't see societies in non-Western countries as an example and models of fighting the glowing climate change issues. Like villages in India, they use solar energy and work with nature to create a sustainable and advancing society. These and all these other activists are not invited to, invited to speak at the UN, nor are they getting interviewed on The Daily Show. Because at the end of the day, Greta Thunberg represents the championing of Western civilization while commercializing the climate movement. It's all about the Benjamins, who also realized that setting a kite on fire with lightning would create too much carbon emissions and he should probably decrease his eco footprint. And some of these climate activists are from indigenous cultures who address the topic of low ecological footprints by working with nature rather than using it for profit margins. We don't look at these types of culture as one to follow, but rather as primitive and uncultured. But green technology can be used in tandem with this philosophy. We can create new technologies that emulate great nature rather than try to replace it. India itself has been making plates from leaves and using food-based utensils that biodegrade into our environment, creating less waste. These societies practice using only what they need and making sure that nothing goes to waste. This means that leftover food becomes something else. The basic philosophies and concepts that is rooting in these Western and indigenous philosophies is to be mindful and not to partake in excess while Western ideology is to consume and leave nothing behind. Like locusts, capitalism has now become a plague of locusts going against the climate movement to consume itself alive. Greed-driven capitalism is the true virus eating the planet. And look, every country is complicated. India's rapid expansion into Western industrialization has created a massive environmental catastrophe. But a society whose fundamental belief is to reduce, reuse, and recycle and not to give into the excess might be able to figure out how to reform and restructure capitalism so it's not a plague consuming humanity itself. And you can tell India is getting influenced by Western culture because Indian restaurants are all about buffets. That's a very Western idea. All you can eat is basically deregulating gluttony. So we got to ask again, why Greta, right? And this might have to do with the counter we hear from the climate deniers and the bringers of snowballs into congressional hearings. We are not scientists. Great. Well, now there's Greta or the 15 other kids that are protesting and asking for legislative action on alternative sources of energy. They have figured out what the continued use of fossil fuels can do. And Greta's emotional speech at the UN got poised and on to the point when she was reciting facts of climate change. So if these kids can figure out all of that, why can't these legislators? If they have less intellectual capacity than a hormonal teenager, then I think we probably need smarter legislators. Can, can IQ be a qualification for public office? Or at least the ability to pass eighth grade science? Look, the right has been countering the praise of Greta Thunberg by saying that the climate change movement should be led by scientists. Great! 
Let's go back to 30 years ago when it was being led by scientists and companies like Exxon and Shell knew about the issue and ignored it. Now let's take that information and bring it into the 21st century and do something about it. 98% of the science community believes climate change is a problem created by man-made industrialization. So the question remains, where are all the scientists? My guess would be trying to use that science to, to solve the looming problem of climate change. So let's go back to the lawsuit these kids are pressing. They are suing a few countries in violation of the UN rights of children. This act grants kids right to life, health, and peace. The biggest issue uh, that is of concern right now is their health, which is getting worse because of the increasing effects of climate change. These kids use words like scared, sad, angry. Is that the darnest thing you've ever heard of? Kids caring about the future. I mean, they need to be dead on the inside, like the adults. So the void they've created by living an unfulfilling life can be filled with more single-use garbage. Kids like Debbie Adeg Adegbile, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, of Laos reports that her asthma has gotten worse and could get life-threatening due to severe heat waves. Akaya Melitafa, once again, apologize if I pronounce that wrong, from Cape, Tech, from Cape Town, is concerned about health ramifications from drought in her city. And we can also say that these kids' peace have been disturbed considering that the military-industrial complex is one of the largest emitters of CO2 to the atmosphere, worsening the climate change problem. At the end of the day, it is good to see kids getting involved in activism and fighting to make their future better than their present. This is going to produce really, really interesting science fair dioramas. Sad, angry, and depressing ones, but interesting nonetheless. But we can't just put the future of cl the climate change movement on Greta's back. If these great initiatives are going to be a part of the capitalistic system, then they should learn from their mistakes by watching what the fossil fuel industry does and trying not to make those same mistakes again by rigging the system. And they shouldn't be using a child to do that. Now look, this is up to all of us. All 15 of those kids, their supporters, the climate activists, water protectors, scientists, and civilians. Look, we can all make small changes that can probably have a really big impact. By reducing our ecological footprint, we can try to reduce the impact of climate change in our daily lives. We can be better together, and we can look beyond our profit margins to a healthier and happier future.